icing. My name is Lucy Egzerian, and today we're making typewriter cookies. I think we all have a pretty over-romanticized view of typewriters. For example, check out this crazy clip from an old Hollywood classic called Ready, Willing, and Able. All right, that's enough. Let's make some cookies. I have found that when you're trying to make a cookie, you have to take an object and sort of have some details, but not too many. You have to draw something out in a very laconic manner. So you're looking for like solid blocks of color and then just a few areas where you can add detail. Like with these little hammers, your little space bar, your letters. And again, when I sketch things out, I try to get a general sense of the size of the cookie and then you just cut it out and you do end up with always slightly larger cookies than whatever your sketch was, but it's pretty close. Although these machines seem kind of outdated today, at one point they were the pinnacle of modern tech and this was exactly how most women made it into the workforce in the early 20th century. I'm gonna outline the little legs right here. I'm sure a lot of women were very happy to be in the workforce, but you have to imagine that these secretarial pools, as they were called, they were just these massive rooms filled with hundreds of people typing away. Women would say that they would slowly lose their hearing after years and years of doing this because it was so loud in there. So, as cute as the machines look, I don't think I would like that job. And as much, as people complain about AI, I'm actually glad we're not typing it anymore. The trick with icing with this consistency, especially if you're outlining and you want a very clean line, is to tap at the beginning of your line and then lift your bag up and only touch it down once you're finished with the line. Because the icing itself and gravity kind of do the rest of the job for you and will make a cleaner line than if you over direct it. And if we want to get even more detailed, we can add the name of one of the very first companies that started mass producing these machines, which was Remington. Now, I know a lot of cookie people have a hard time with lettering, and so do I, but I think it just comes with practice. The more you do it, the easier it gets, so we're gonna attempt to write Remington freehand. Now, although today we use modern computers, our keyboards are actually very reflective of these old typewriters with the QWERTY system, which is how the alphabet is set up on the modern keyboard. And the reason for the way the letters are set up is because these old machines would jam up if you had commonly used letters too close to each other. So the alphabet had to kind of be dispersed in a random order, which is why we have the QWERTY system. So it's kind of a pointless remnant from the typewriter. As outdated as typing machines are today, they are still used because if you think about it, you don't need electricity to run it. So if you're in a remote location, like a lot of missionaries still use these in places where there's no connection to the outside world, which I think is pretty cool. And in New York, you do see the occasional poet writing poems in parks for you for a couple of dollars. But that's pretty much the only place I see typewriters today.
and squeeze me my kind of love one way to paradise yeah my kind of lips your kind of lips when love comes stealing encourage that feeling my kind of love one way to paradise
Thank you for watching. Next week, you can join me, Steve Williams, Grant Stewart, and Tardo Hammer as we celebrate bird and birds.